and then I wanted to get like a drink from the kitchen. I come downstairs, Zach's like on his knees in front of the girl doing something sexual. And he's like, come on, man. And that just infuriated me because was, he's was being patronizing to me. Uh-uh. It's, it's a shared apartment. I'm allowed to grab a drink, dude. So I recall that's what him putting me. you to bed. I recall him saying, Danny, go to bed. Because <laughs> he was completely <laughs> wasted. Dude, the refrigerator it, is downstairs, dude. There's a sink I'm not a child. I don't have to go to bed at a certain time. There's I'm not a, a child. In the You're treating me like a Get child. That that's what made me angry. Water, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no? Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Guys, welcome back to Oops! The Podcast. We have an extra special episode for you today. I'm Julio Gallarotti. I'm here, as always, with Ryan Lynch. Hey, everybody. My trusty confidant, co-host, and producer. Thank you. Um, a man who wears many hats in a world where wearing hats is helpful. <laughs> well said. Very nice. Happy Guys, to be here. I'm sitting next to Julio today, which yes is you pretty are. nice. Yes, you are. We have a very special episode for you guys. Uh, we have two comedians on the show. I'll introduce them, and then I'll give a little background about why I'm so excited about this episode. First off, uh, some someone who you guys are very familiar with. He's been on the show a few times. Bus Ryan's balls. Uh, mm. You know, he <laughs> he effectively is a recurring character on the show at this point. Give it up for hilarious comedian Danny Palmer. Thank Woo! you. Glad to be back. Appreciate it. Yep. And making his debut on Oops the Podcast, uh, another very funny comedian, a uh, good friend of all of ours, best friend of Danny. Well, sometimes. Uh, and... A great comedian in his own right. Uh, give it up for Zach McGovern, everybody. Ooh, thanks for having me, guys. There you go. Let's um, get angry. I wanted to have Zach and Danny on today. They both come on the road with me a bunch. I started basically started comedy with both of them. Uh, I've known them forever. They hang out a lot. And they really have a funny relationship. Like, they don't really get along a lot of the time. <laughs> In sort of a fraternal way, like the way that brothers argue these two are at each other's throats. And they're more likely to say something horrible to each other than they are to say something nice to each other. But in the way that brothers do. And I will say that most of the time, Danny is the one who tends to take issue with Zach Mm -hmm. initially, which turns into a big fight. Sometimes it's justified. Other times, maybe not. But I've always found it fascinating. And they (laughs) used to have a show together that was supposed to be about space. And it just turns into them fighting with each other the entire show. It was so funny. I don't know what they, I guess they ended up having a breakup. And now the show has kind of been buried under the umbrella of Danny's show. If you're clever enough, you might be able to find some of the episodes. And maybe we can link a couple of the funny ones here. Yeah, we can. If you guys are entertained by these guys fighting with each other. So, anyway, that's that. Uh, Zach and Danny wanted to bring them on the show and to highlight their dynamic and just talk about a bunch of the stuff that's been going on. How you guys doing? Good, man. Thanks for having me for the first time. Love, love the podcast. Happy to be on it. Uh, Hell yeah. I'm happy Danny's here. This will be a fun one. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, Sam. Nice. Just minding our manners here at the outset. Well, I mean, I got, <laughs> I immediately got told how to act on the podcast by Danny before even getting here. I was like, refresh my memory. Is this your podcast or Julio's podcast? <laughs> Not told. Requested. <laughs> Requested. One of us has a day job career. The other okay, so Danny has some hopeful prospects in his personal life that he is worried that Zach is going to torpedo and destroy <laughs> for some reason. Uh, and, you know, this may or may not be a warranted thing, but let's uh, let's uh, unpack it a bit. Generally speaking, you're worried about Zach saying something that's going to make your life difficult. Basically. Yes. Specifically about something, something specific, potentially. Yeah. And you're worried that Zach is just so unchained, wild, and this wild animal that he is. I'm not worried about that. I just wanted to give him a day's heads up to be just cautious about the topics in light of, you know, my overall life. That's right. all. I just want to give him a day's notice to ha- keep that in mind. I don't realize he's going to take offense at it, but right, I right, think right. it's a fair request. I did not take, I didn't take offense to it. Oh, well, no. you didn't reply. I know I did. You just said, ha ha ha, I'm sending this to Julio. <laughs> well, that's a reply. Well, what, well, what a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, what have been nice is no problem, Danny. Certainly respect you as a friend, and I'll I'll keep an eye out for that. Nope. Ha ha ha. Sending this to Julio because it's so you. And I I was like, well, you know, this is a the, it's a third party podcast. It's not like your podcast having me on, which used to be our podcast. It's it's. I was like, okay, this will be fun. It'll be a little more 
you know, free flowing and, and you won't be able to get as angry. And then getting that message, I was just like, here we go. <laughs> that's based on specific examples of your past behavior on yeah. podcasts. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That yeah. is fair. Yeah. So uh, th I understand where both of you guys are coming from. Zach has said wild stuff when you guys used to record. So you yeah. felt like you needed to make it known. Zach is thinking, all right, dude, well, you know, I, Zach was fully coming here prepared to not say certain things. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. right. Because he knows, first of all, that I'm not going to air them. Absolutely. Right. Uh, but I do understand the caution. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. All good. That's all. That's all. So, yeah. dude. All right. We've all been hanging out since two, probably two. I mean, I met Danny in 2009. I probably met McGovern either in 2009 or 2010. I right? think it was like a year after because you guys had, you guys were already kind of like I think friends. You would go to mics and stuff. Yeah, yep. yeah, and then I saw you start coming around. Yeah, um, and then we all started hanging out. You two, at some point, started hanging out all the time. Pretty much, your lifestyles aligned. Yeah, you both like going out. Danny sort of progressed more in that direction since I've known him. He's become hmm. more of a man on the town. He's turned into a later on the weeknights, going to yeah. bed, staying up all night on the weekends kind of guy. You're dancing around the term alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> And Danny loves getting out there. He loves the chase. He loves meeting chicks. You historically do as well. Yeah. So this work, this work. Putting nice it mildly. The thing that I love about this, you guys both wore your your two tees, your solid yeah. tees. I have a like, wide range of tees. Zach has three. Okay. Oh, sorry that you. Even have... in winter, it's only three t-shirts. That's one of my digs. What is your shirt say? Does it say Calvin Klein? It does. Yeah, because you got it in 2016 when you worked there, and that's all you wear. 2018, and yeah, there were a bunch, well, and they were free. It's still seasons ago buddy like, why do you have no long sleeve shirts you live in a, a cold city shirts. no you I, don't yes i do why do you know it's my january wardrobe? it's weird that you know my wardrobe but there's only three things to know. know the only reason i know it's your three wardrobe shirts is because i know it's calvin klein how do you know my wardrobe dude? i've i've started to add in some other stuff along <laughs> like the way what? like what i, I mean, just another, got some banana republic shirts shirt with a weird stripe across the middle of it <laughs> Why is a stripe weird? Because it's like a child's shirt. You have stripes on Speaking your of child's on elbows. <laughs> stay out of this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan coming to Danny's defense. Yeah. Just to be fair. True, but I sound across the middle. I don't know. Across the middle to me, just like I remember like kids in like middle school having like, hey, look at my little shirt. It's, it's giving a 2004 Old Navy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. I only have two Old shirts Navy. like that. I also have a wide range of clothing. You only have three T-shirts. It's like a you're, it's like a serial killer three. behavior, bro. I have way. I have. It is true. I have three T-shirts like, that I wear a lot, but you have no. You only shirt. have three T-shirts that you wear all the time, and that's it. Do you have anything that doesn't say Calvin Klein somewhere on it? <laughs> yes. Where? Bring it. Show it. I mean, like ten to ten percent or less. Patreon. I want to see one shirt that he has. It's not Calvin Klein. I have some, but you're right. It's probably it's predominantly Calvin Klein. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it's okay. a range of clothing, unlike your three. It's a range of clothing you got for free six years ago. <laughs> so what? <laughs> it's good quality material. It's like, dude, what are you doing? One day there's going to be a forensic files, and it's just going to be like going into detail on why does Zach only have three t-shirts. That'll be part of the case. <laughs> so Julio, that you, several women built against him. Julio worked at Calvin Klein with us for a short period of time. And you remember, on like oh, yeah. Fridays, they would put out those giant cardboard boxes full of clothing. I do remember. And that's Danny's entire wardrobe is shirts out of cardboard boxes. <laughs> like, Dude, I... I, <laughs> I don't understand why that's funny. I, 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 look, <laughs> I look back upon that time in a way that I judge myself a bit. Because yeah. like all the temps would just like take seven garbage bags home with them. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. we'd all be like walking out with like enough clothes yeah. to send back to our family. Well, all the all the temps and the guy in HR, dude. And dude. Yeah, I was the ringleader. Yeah, dude. And also the other thing that was funny, there was like free soda in the office, and like no one who actually worked there would drink it, but all the like temp losers would. Like <laughs> ah, free soda for yeah. you. Ooh. Oh, unlimited soda. Like no one was drinking the soda. Dude, I remember they, used to, they had a it couple. It was so times. patronizing the yeah, way, that, they the way that the bosses would. Free Do you guys so want soda? Free soda. You're young and poor. You need soda, right? <laughs> Here's a can of dry <laughs> seltzer. You piece of shit. Go back to the inventory closet. <laughs> <laughs> Your office space has no windows. No, it was dude. And sometimes they would have. I don't even remember. Like there was a couple times they had like lunches or like early dinners, and there would be. They would order for everybody except us. I know. We uh, get the scraps. Literally. They'd be like, there's some leftovers. There's there. some food left. Oh, oh, for me, sir? <laughs> you just see everyone dumping their leftovers onto one plate and sliding it over to us. <laughs> Is that That's how that. you guys met? 
at Calvin Klein, just right, for right, those right, that right. don't know the inside. Sorry, no, no. we knew each other baseball. before that, and Danny worked at Calvin Klein and ki- kindly got a bunch of comedians temp jobs. Yeah, you did, which was great. Jobs that anybody nice. could do. I was one of the hires, mm-hmm. as was Zach and a yeah. few others. Yeah. Um, well, apparently not everybody, because some comics just got fired immediately. You guys were like disciplined and had social skills and thus crazy. could stay for a long time. Like people can't <laughs> do a simple job like that. I know. It's the so easiest just job categorizing in the world. and doing inventory all day. Yeah, it's because comedians, like, I imagine a few of the people who took that job had egos about it and, like, yeah. were above stuff. They're putting their feet up on the desk. They're doing whatever they want, you know. Yeah, guess what? Yeah, you're not above like, it. You're below it. You can't even do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you have to keep in mind, if you're there, you need it. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't be there. So there's no reason to act like you're above it. Dude, I was very happy there because I was the only time up until that point that I had some sort of, like, consistent income to nice. the point where my shrink recommended that I quit doing comedy. What? He's like, you sound much happier. Just, just, you know, he's like, maybe it's worth considering like phasing out of, did you quit him? No, but I want, dude, he was, he was pretty good. Like in general, like he got me to sort of like address some difficult things that were helpful. You know how they do that sometimes, yeah. but sometimes he would get too intense, dude. And say shit that was weird. I'd be like telling him how I was thinking about one of my ex girlfriends or something. He'd be like, did you think about fucking her? What? <laughs> I was like, bro, what the fuck? The he accent, had an accent. Really? Boundaries, bro. Did you think about fucking her? I was like, dude, ew. I would feel like he was being <laughs> condescending constantly. Yeah. I couldn't have my therapist have an accent like that. I, I wouldn't be able to share anything. It was intense. Like, yeah. You're going to make fun of me for it. It was intense for yeah. sure. Okay, so wait, let's get back on track here. So you two, you end up hanging out a bunch. And, you know, you must have had gone through some sort of honeymoon phase as friends <laughs> where you got along great. You were excited to be friends with each other. Yeah. Um, well, at first I thought he was a loser. Can we cut, cover that for a second? <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> he came to our show at Lair. I knew this was coming, dude. The backpack. You wore a backpack. And shorts. Shorts and a backpack. Just me and Julio had like a respectable, cool show. And then here comes Zach McGovern in with his backpack and shorts. Can I get a spot sometime? No. That's <laughs> autism wearing its ugly head, dude. He's like, what? Why is autism ugly? It's inappropriate. I, okay, I take it back. Not ugly hat. I just meant that as like uh. a term, but like shorts in a backpack? What is wrong with that? It's a stand-up show. You're supposed to wear pants. It was a stand-up show at a thin bar. Like it was there was not it wasn't like a fancy place. So what? Pants are essential in stand-up. I see shorts on stage all the time. And it's inappropriate. <laughs> Danny hates people who bring backpacks out to the comedy club. Uh. It's one of his pet peeves. Yeah. If you ever get booked on Danny's show, do not bring your no, backpack. No, nope. no, you'll never get booked. Friday again. night backpack nope. energy. He calls it. Dude. This that, isn't yeah. on stage. I hate this it. is just walking into the club with the backpack. Yes, correct. Yeah, just go home and set your backpack down in a remote Queens or wherever you live, and then come into the city without a backpack. I don't understand why people need to have a backpack on a weekend night. But a lot of people it makes have no like sense. Notebooks in there with their jokes and like food to eat while they're out because they don't have a lot of money because they're starting stand up. You can bring a bag lunch and throw the bag away. You don't need a whole backpack on a Friday night. What Danny's saying is get your shit together if you want to do his show, dude. Yeah. That's fair because that's your show. So yeah. you can have all the rules you want. I, I, yeah. I feel you on that. Yeah. That, dude, you should, you should include back down email. You should include a uh, sort of like booking sheet where you tell people the rules of the show. No uh, backpacks in capital letters. But you could, you could frame it in a way that doesn't, it's like nicer. You could just be like the show sells out a lot of times. There's not a lot of extra room. If you have a backpack, <laughs> you can leave it at home. Yeah, you, you dorks. Well, I, yeah, but I, I pick who I book, so I don't have to. I don't. I yeah, don't but sometimes you book people who bring backpacks. Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah, but you don't know until they do it, and then they no longer get booked. In a way, that's good. It's like a survival of the fittest thing. Like you yeah. shouldn't have to say anything. They should just know better. And if they're not the type of person who knows better, then. Sayonara. Have you specifically not booked a person because the first time that they came in, they wore a backpack? Ooh. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. I'd get texts about have? it. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'll get a text I've, about it immediately, dude. I, it's That's someone, hilarious. like someone, another comic referred someone to me. I was like, okay, I trust you. He showed up in shorts and a backpack. I'm like, that's <laughs> curtains. And he wasn't even that cool. But usually shorts and a backpack on a Friday night equate to not that cool, not that great of a personality. I'm not trying to be rude, but it's, I mean, <laughs> well, it's consistently true. Because they're obviously not going out <laughs> after the show chasing chicks, dude. Why would you do that with shorts and a backpack on? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Accurate. Okay. Yeah. So, did Jan. Okay, <laughs> at some point, like Danny, so Danny's had a glow up. Danny looks much better than he used to. You do look Thanks, the bro. best you've ever looked. Danny, you, has, that. Danny has you become too. a presentable, fuckable guy. Mm-hmm. Danny you. and and when he first when we first met him he was still finding his his look. I look terrible. So to speak. You're right. You know, little, like he 
wasn't as in in really in great shape. Yeah. You've become in very good shape. Um, you know, you 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 were a little schlubby. I was. Yeah, yeah. And, and speaking, I was making fun of your clothes, but back then you were like, it was like loose fitting, always like button downs, and like your pants were too loose. You just didn't look good. It was Thanks. Like, I know. I didn't. Yeah. I agree. So anyway, so now here you are, this presentable guy. Now, do you think in some capacity, now that you have had this glow up, you look great, do you think that that has created a source of tension between you and Zach? Because at first, you and Zach just were like not even in the same league. Now, as you've kind of closed the gap slightly, does it create more tension if you guys are going out, trying to meet people? Where's, where's, where's the, like some, one of the main sources of tension? I was unaware of this gap closure. <laughs> <laughs> a gap is still firmly in place. <laughs> it's still a pretty big. Zach gap is like, now. dude, that's an insult. Bro. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, buddy! It's almost as big as your forehead. Ah. Ah. I mean, <laughs> I don't really think I've closed the gap with Zach. Zach's like a you know an Adonis, as Tim Dillon says. So like, I don't think that that really impacts. I, you know, I think we're both just kind of like type A and assertive. And so we have both have a competitive nature, but he's always going to win with girls, at least like from a surface level. Well, hopefully it shouldn't have to be like that. I know, exactly. I, like, I can win based me. on a conversation, but Zach's going to win on appearance. What? I said it's not for me. It's not a, it's not a competition. I know. Me. Well, but well Danny, sometimes you act like it is, though. I maybe this is your problem, bro. You're putting hmm. Zach on a pedestal here, bro. Zach, while Zach's a very good looking dude, like he is also potentially a type in some capacity yeah, where true, you might true. meet a girl who doesn't like him. I've heard and she's girls into say you. That. There's plenty yeah. of girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a small. It's like ten percent or less, but they do exist, and ten okay. percent of the population is a lot of people. I mean, so, I'm not pretending. That's my that only hope. Girl likes me. I, so ninety percent of yeah. women are into are interested in Zach. Probably. You're gonna get a lot of comments on that. Well, way more. Like, I'm not. He's a piece of shit. Look at him. Uh, it's a higher percentage of girls that would initially be attracted to Zach than to me. And I've, I've come to terms bro, with that. that's sad. Okay? It actually helps me step up my game. That's not it's true, true though. No, but that you, that is a very like <clears throat> like black and white way of looking at something. Yeah. That's just going to lead you to be unhappy, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, okay. who cares? You're yeah. like, if you're like, well, they're most... So, they will like Zach, for sure. If they if they like Zach, then that means that I... Like, Self-fulfilling prophecy. It, it's just that like an true, unnecessary, true. unnecessary thoughts, potentially. Yeah. yeah. But it is true for some of the time, because I see it when we go out. So, you guys will bitch about each other to me, you know... And, yeah, and I know. <laughs> it's obvious, you know, Poor the, G. the same things. No, I, I enjoy it. Personally. The same shit you say to each other. I'm sure you're saying to me. Yeah. But what are so in your opinion, what is this? What is the source of tension typically when That's you guys be more of a Danny question? I don't know. <laughs> so you're saying Danny starts. it? I think it's more on Danny's end. The tension. I, I really do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, I, I think you've gotten a lot better in recent years, but I don't really remember the initial sources of tension yeah i don't know oh, from the I mean. podcast and stuff like that no bro okay so you guys that. go out on a friday night for example you're both talking to girls let's say zach's girl happens to leave and now there's one girl left i feel like that scenario can sometimes create that's bad, a, that's bad news. Could create tension for you guys and i'm leaving shortly after you've both been drinking with that girl <laughs> <laughs> so i feel like that has been a thing a fight i've witnessed you guys have where zach what you think zach is talking to your girl Oh yeah, that's definitely been a thing. Not in the past few years, but no, no I'm not saying it hasn't been. It has been. Yeah. It has been for sure. Yeah. Well, we used to. I used to call you Swoop McGovern because if Zach wasn't getting like his way with the girl that he was with, and I was talking to a girl, he just oh, I'll just scooch on in here. Or if I went to the bathroom, all of a sudden he's in a very in-depth conversation with her, touching her arm. I'm like, bro, I was just talking to her five minutes ago. Uh 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 uh. I I'm got, not saying that I happens got, all the time. It did gotta, happen sometimes. I got to put my foot down in that bathroom situation because there's been multiple times where it has been you and I with one girl and you literally will give me like two twenties and be like, dude, get us all around. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Just make sure she doesn't leave. And then I'll talk to her while you're gone. And then you'll come back and be like, dude, find another girl, dude. <laughs> I'm like, what did I, what? I just did what you asked me to do. I mean, I don't know that that's an exact recount of the it truth. Is. I remember it one time at Library Bar specifically. <laughs> Danny's favorite bar. Right? Library Bar. Because I remember the girl being like, what just happened? Like, he's like mad at you now? What? We were just talking while he was in the bathroom. And I was like, I don't know. This is Danny. This is what he does. He's probably drunk. I don't know. I mean, it was probably PTSD from six other times and you've done it in the past. And maybe it wasn't accurate at that time, but it had <laughs> happened before. Well, then don't ask me to occupy the girl while you're in the bathroom if you're just going to get angry when you come out. Okay, you want to hear a specific example? Yes. One time, we sure. uh, I went to the we bathroom absolutely. and Zach had my phone for some reason, which I never should have done. He went <laughs> on my phone to a girl that he knew that I liked and sent her a picture of himself. <laughs> <laughs> what 
what the fuck are you doing to my text messages? First of all, what else? What? Just a photo of himself? Yeah, to be like, hey, send this to one of your girlfriends. I'm like, dude, I don't want the girls yeah. that I like. Then you have sex with their friends. Like, steer, steer clear What's of my life. That? Isn't that the whole that? nature? Not, of not going into of... my phone to do it. That's ridiculous. Okay, of of the That's fair. Uh, in the bachelor lifestyle, theoretically, isn't it nice for crews? to sort of get together. So therefore you have a one girl in the crew. Yeah. He has one girl in the crew. I would say ordinarily yes, but with Zach, no. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, going back to what he was talking about, it, it was wrong you of me. You can do it, Ricky, fine. Not Zach, no. It was wrong of me to respond to a message on your phone, but it was, ba I literally said what you said. I was like, send this, send a picture of me to your friends. Like if you have any hot friends, like show them who I am and we can all hang out. I said, we can all hang out. I wasn't like trying to steal your girl. <laughs> Danny felt you felt differently. You felt some sort of yeah. I feel like a model guy sending a picture of himself to a girl I like at two in the morning is a little bit sus. With the following text message being like, "Send this to your friends, and then we can all hang out." Can we find? Is the message there still? Can we see if we can find it? I oh, mean, I've known that end? girl for a long time. What's her name? Huh? You you can find I have no it. Idea. Yeah, uh, maybe. Look it would take it. a while. Can, can we try? Right. I think it caused such a heated argument once he saw that picture of me that it just it, I was just like I don't even want anything to do with that you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah well I feel like you've done that in the past you don't you you've gotten so much better like now now we don't have any issues with that but there there were times in the past when yeah. I, you so did, you been did St. Pete on that trip there's been girls. I was talking to three girls and then uh, Zach saw that I'm talking to these three girls now he's talking to those three girls like you definitely do that if there's three girls why would I not come in and support the crew yeah. <laughs> you're supporting the crew. I think you're supporting your own dick, you know I mean? dude. Just to, of course, I'm kind of trying to get in as well, but if there's three girls, why would I not come over and talk to them if you're talking to them? But I had, I don't know. I wasn't even there anymore, and you just like, I don't know. I went to the bathroom dude. one second, whoop, and you were talking to the different dude, girls, but the then you idea, saw that I was talking to other girls, so you I had to come Danny in. I think is, he's like, like an animal that pisses on a tree. He's like, that's my tree. Even if I walk away from that tree, that's still my tree. I can't pee on that tree now. But you're trying to piss on every tree on the planet at well, all times. Yeah. So, but you're saying, <laughs> yeah. so say there's, there's an assort, there's an assortment of trees and there's no way for everybody to use the tree for whatever it is you're going to use it for. He appears, Danny's marking multiple trees at once. Mm -hmm. And then Zach comes over and wants some bark <laughs> and Danny says, absolutely not. These are all my trees. But your point, which is a good one is, you know, it makes a girl wants to hang out with a guy who, ha who has friends potentially yeah. a social setting where it doesn't feel so like we are on a date. I'm going to try to fuck you. Well, right. Especially you in know? a situation where like, and I will say Danny's very good about approaching women. That's definitely a thing that you're great at. Thanks, bro. But you too. a lot of times he'll approach a group of girls and then it's like, well, obviously I'm going to come up and be like, hey, what's up? You know, Danny, I'm Zach, blah, blah, blah. And I can feel the tension every time I do it. And Danny's just like, what are you doing? Dude? I, I mean, I feel like this is like painting a broad stroke to specific situations it isn't really fair oh i'm sorry that you just brought up two specific situations from your side but i can't bring up any. but that's not what happened in that st pete situation <laughs> it's a funny image bro of like danny talking to four girls and zach coming over somehow being threatening like he's godzilla or something <laughs> dun 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 like he's just gonna fucking blast them with the godzilla heat wave and take them all down i see what you're saying bro yeah. but but you're afraid danny's sort of afraid that here he is he's made this push and he's done a great job at talking to these girls who like him. And Zach's going to kind of just swoop him out of the way. And Danny suddenly no longer matters in the equation somehow. That has not ever once happened. It's happened in the early stages, early years of our friendship. It happened a lot. In repeatedly. Repeatedly. And, but to, but you've got you, actually that's no longer an issue like no. we're talking about something that's fully in the past i think yeah. occasionally i might have ptsd based on those past circumstances but to zach's great credit he's completely eliminated that behavior and is a great wingman and a great friend thank you zach. i've taken i've t made an effort to do that because i'm like i know the things that irk you so i'm like try not to do that when you guys are out you know yeah. what i mean yeah i but appreciate it i will say and I, I think i've told you this before it's pushed me a little bit further to the other side even where like if a situation happens where you're talking to one girl and it's you and me and I'm not necessarily talking to a girl and you go to the bathroom, I'm not saying a fucking word to that girl. <laughs> I'm turning my back to her. I don't know you. Stranger danger. Stay away from me. <laughs> but I, I don't want any issues. <laughs> I just know your mindset. You, you're an omnivore. You want all women at all times. Well, I mean, of all. course, I like I'm, I seek attention. Well, you know, I'm going to and I'm an attention whore. So like, yeah, also, if you're talking to her and you got you haven't like made out with her or something like why can't i i'm not just be friendly yeah. to no, her no 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 that's fine thinks. yes and that's maybe neither fine. of us the ptsd that i'm referencing that was not the sort what you're describing is very innocuous yeah. the examples from our early friendship were not innocuous okay 
Okay, but there's growth. There's been some absolutely, growth. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to re dig up that trench. No, that, that's been feel, buried. The, the axe is buried. <laughs> yeah. Which one of us is going to cry first? <laughs> I would like to cry. <laughs> guys, I think it's fair to say all the guys out there want to make sure that they are performing at a high level they in do. the bedroom. Hundred percent. Right? There's there's something Who there. Wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to be great at what they do in that department? The pleasure department. Feeling like a man. <laughs> Right. Being able to give it your best at all times. And look, sometimes you meet somebody new and you can get in your head with that kind of stuff. You can be, you can become anxious. And sometimes that sort of anxiety can lead to overthinking and then things not working as well as you want them to. And you don't want to do that. We want to show up unburdened by anxiety, ready to give it our best and uh, to make the people we care about and that we want to impress feel as if we have uh, impressed them. So here at Oops the Podcast, we recommend trying out the sexual performance booster from Joy Mode. So Joy Mode's sexual performance booster is like a pre-workout for sex. Uh-huh. It's designed to support erection quality, uh-huh. firmness, uh-huh. and the old SD, and I'm not talking about San Diego. Uh-uh. I'm talking about sex drive. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> vroom, vroom. <laughs> it contains clinically supported doses of arginine, nitrate, L-citrulline, Panax, ginseng, and vitamin C. Not only is it the only supplement that you'll need in the bedroom, but it also supports blood vessel support, cardiovascular and heart health, athletic performance, blood pressure, general erection function. Go to usejoymode.com and get 20% off with code OOPS at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping with code OOPS, O-O-P-S, at usejoymode.com. Calm. No more beating around the bush. Nope. Get in there. Um, well, I remember. Yeah, like I remember one time you guys got into a fight when we were all on the road together. Ooh. Oh yeah, <laughs> a little Tampa stitch. This yeah. is a good one. So okay, we're down there in Tampa, as I always am. Uh, <laughs> I'm constantly in the Tampa and St. Pete area. It was great. It was great. Yeah, it looked yeah. fun. It was really fun. Um, shout out to Coastal Creative. That place is sweaters. amazing. When I did it with you what, last year, it was it's great, incredible. Coastal Creative is amazing. Great club, great spot. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Danny and Zach were in the comedy condo that they gave us, um, and I, I stayed somewhere else. Um, it wasn't a flex. I think there's only two beds in there. No, right? no, you were, you were yeah. just like there's not enough room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I allowed that. I let them stay with each other, and they got into a fight that was pretty amusing to me. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys remember? Uh, yeah. yeah, do I remember? <laughs> yeah. How I remember. Was this? this was probably a year ago. Do you want to tell your side of it first? Uh, uh, look, Zach defeated me for the one girl that was available at the end of the night, and, and she liked him, and that's fine. I just didn't like, I came downstairs. I don't remember it that way, Danny. You were talking to somebody too that night, if I yeah. recall. I think, yeah. she, I think, but she didn't then, come back to the condo with us. Well, I think she was engaged. That ended up being a problem. Well, oh also, yeah. That also, redheaded that's girl. <laughs> that's never a problem for Danny. That's a challenge accepted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danny no. likes an uphill battle. He does. He loves it. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. So what happened? The, I, I was wasted. I didn't have dinner that night. I'm out of line because I was like, <laughs> I guess I was like jealous. That he got the girl and I didn't, but having, but that that's fine. I like, conceded my defeat and went upstairs and went to bed and then i wanted to get like a drink from the kitchen i come downstairs zach's like on his knees in front of the girl doing something sexual and he's like come on man and that just infuriated me because it was he's being patronizing to me uh-uh. it's it's a shared apartment i'm allowed to grab a drink dude See, that's, i recall that's what him putting me. you to bed i recall him saying danny go to bed because <laughs> he was completely <laughs> wasted like i was trying to be a good friend and because no you was, were trying to clear out the apartment well you do that you, i had you, just as much right to yeah, as you did you were off your ass hammered dude you were like sitting there and you had to like look in your eyes everything i said you're just like dude it's fucking stupid dude, dude. dude, no, dude. but then, yeah, but but then the take thing. the girl up to the room if you want to fuck her you don't that's not she, that's a she shared wanted, living room she space wanted to hang out down there for a little bit and i said go to bed and then you went to bed and i i, I remember differently i remember you coming back downstairs and getting mad at us for like making out and hook and like starting to hook up down there and then we were like okay let's go upstairs and it's like no, dude, that's not what happened. No, okay, it's not what happened in your mind. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's two sides of both stories. There's your side, your side, my side, and the correct side. How many stories are there here? You're just one story. Yeah, well, there's we the third that? story, which I ha- I can add some things. So yeah, yeah. this this is not the problem. The problem arises where Zach had an ex girlfriend. I was gonna add that who part. he was kind of talking to still. Whatever she was intending to come the next night. Oh, baby, this is the best part of the story. Danny, <laughs> no regrets. Danny no regrets. goes upstairs. What'd you tell her? I was like, Zach's here hooking up with some girl. 
he don't, said, he said don't come. Yeah, don't if you're going to disrespect and patronize me when I'm on a comedy trip trying to do comedy, then all bets are off. Then I'm going to get you back. <laughs> Get you back. And I still don't regret doing that. Disrespect you. In your completely hammered mind, I was disrespecting you. You did disrespect me. You were just me. mad because I had a girl at the house. You were just pissed that you didn't get a girl with you. No, I'm pissed at your specific behavior. When I came back downstairs to get a drink, you stood up and were like, come on, man. Like, I'm not allowed to be in the living room of a shared apartment. Yes, I am. I'm an adult, uh, dude. That's not don't what kick happened. me out. This isn't college. That's not what happened. And also, up until like... <laughs> Five minutes before this podcast her is over. I, <laughs> up until like five minutes before her and I were like basically making out, Danny was still like acting like there was a chance that he was going to go with No, her. I was. This I, is I remember very that. obvious here. Bro. I was just hanging out. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> it is. It's That's a revisionist obvious. history. A lot of what Zach says is revisionist and history. And also, here's the thing like, if I'm in a kitchen at like three in the morning and I'm hammered and I'm with my buddy who's with a girl who they're clearly going to do some shit, I'd be like, all right, man. I'm going to go upstairs now. I'm not just going to sit there and like keep getting like go upstairs, dog. You know what's about to happen. Give us a fucking minute. Okay. That's treating me like a child. I'm an adult. I'm allowed to spend whatever. If you want to take a girl to to the bedroom, then do it. If, if we're in the living room, I don't have to go to a bed at a certain time, dude. Yeah, but a lot You're of times treating You're treating me like a child. You're literally treating me like a child. That's what infuriated me. You needed to be treated I'm not a like child. a child in that situation. Dude, you're, no, like, I you're literally there just wobbling take her up to the, back and forth. So what? You're exaggerating. No, you were, dude. You were like wobbling and you're, everything I said, you just be like, dude, mm. like just snippy, snappy Danny, drunk Danny. Even to the point where the girl was like, he's wasted. And I was like, yeah, he's fucking hammered. And then, like, I was, I had to be like, bro, go upstairs, man. You didn't have to be like that. You could have taken her upstairs. But she wasn't ready to go upstairs yet. That's my point. She, I, she was just like still hanging out. You know what I mean? You can't just be like, let's go to the bedroom now, woman. You have to like let her make the decision to want to go upstairs with you. Okay, that's fine. But when I came back downstairs to get a drink, that is my prerogative. It's a shared space. It's not your space. It's Dude, shared, and oh. I'm allowed to go to the kitchen whenever I want to in a shared space. He, he was looking for it. I think he came back downstairs on purpose because he was just like. I'm, I'm gonna go back downstairs if I want to. Like, dude, the refrigerator is downstairs, dude. Okay, there's a sink I'm not in a the child. Bathroom. I don't have to go to bed at a certain time. There's I'm not a, a child. In the You're treating me like a Get child. That That's what made me angry. Water, <laughs> yeah. Danny also typically stays up very late on the weekends. Yeah, exactly. He was in sort of mid stride of his Friday. Yeah, exactly. Why do yeah. I gotta go close my close a bedroom door because Zach decided I need to? Fuck you. I'm an adult. I mean, it's also just a good wingman move in that situation to be like, all right, I'm. A, I'm. A, if that was me, I would 100 percent would have been like. All right, I'm going to go upstairs and fuck around on my phone if I'm not ready to go to bed. Like, I'm going to give them a little bit of them space. Okay, I was completely hammered, and that's a fair point. But coming back downstairs, I don't need to be spoken to in a patronizing manner. I'm allowed to go to the kitchen. Yeah, and also, you were completely Can we hammered. move on to the next topic? <laughs> she, ended up, she ended up coming still, right? What, where? The, 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 your, the your, your Yeah, she came the ex. next day. She came the next day. Yeah. And then I lied to her and told her that Danny was crazy and there wasn't a girl there. And then eventually I was like, there was a girl there. <laughs> <laughs> Which she knew the whole time. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. But also, can we just not glaze over the fact that him texting the girl that's about to come visit me is a huge bitch move, dude? No, I think it's fair. I think you're it's. The, uh, also, you're saying. You, Turnabout is fair play. But here's the Turn thing. Turnabout is fair play. You, you, I don't regret doing that. You're about that. to eat your own words because you're sitting there being like, I'm an adult. I'm not a child. But then you go upstairs and do a very childlike thing. <laughs> No, I just struck back. You struck me. I struck you. I did, I, what? I didn't strike you. Yeah, you what did. Are you talking you, about? Speaking to me in a patronizing manner is metaphorically so that's, taking a swing at me. And so I took a swing back at you equal metaphorically. That's upstairs and texting my ex who's coming to visit the next day. That's equal levels to you? Yeah. That's wildly wrong. Then don't treat me like that. <laughs> to me, that's in the same same level mind. of offense. In your drunken mind, I treated you like... In my sober mind today, to this like, day. Him and him, him, his ex got a girl with him. Don't come tomorrow. And then you send that and you're like, Good job, Danny. I stand by it. And if you do something like that to me again, I'll do something like that again. You'll, you'll be a little child bitch again. You were treating me like a child bitch. So I treated you like a child bitch. You, I treated you like it was my fault. I treated like I'm a child, like he was a child. So he went upstairs and acted like a child. <laughs> With chicken or the egg. Okay. Right? I mean, let's let the comments figure it out. Yeah. We'll see what you guys think about this. Uh, I remember the next day you both were like talking to me about it. I, was like, guys, <laughs> I know you got to figure it out, guys. I don't know what to tell yeah, you. Like, Julie was like our dad <laughs> on a trip. <laughs> I was fine, but you were still so pissed the next day. I was like, dude, let's just like let it be water under the bridge. And you're like still angry. And like I was outside on the phone and you opened the no, door. No, you were like, angry at me the next day too. I was talking. <laughs> you I were was, furious. You were outside the apartment almost yelling to Julio. I was like, dude, yeah, the neighbors can hear this. You opened the door, put this screen open. And you're like, dude, you're just going to sit outside and talk shit about me, dude? I you, like, yeah, I can hear it from inside the apartment. I was like, I'm telling Julio what happened. You so were talking you can shit. understand if it's a weird situation today. Like this is what happened. You were telling dad your side of the story. 
I mean, I just didn't want him to be upset. Like, <laughs> now, dude, now, why did I bring now, these? Now, now, boys. Why did I bring these two losers on the road with me? <laughs> Julian's got to get some better openers. <laughs> Well, you guys got along quite well in Toronto, if I recall. Yeah, oh, we did go, but that's, you know, that's been a couple years now. Yeah, like, you've you know, worked on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Learned my lesson a little bit. The, mm. These stories are all substantially in the past, to our credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. recently yeah. there hasn't been any, uh, not that I can think of, any big issues. No, you've been great, bro. Yeah. And I will say this, guys. You know, Zach and Danny, they're both fun-loving guys. On a Friday or Saturday night, you can catch them in the mix, yep. hanging out. <laughs> Meeting chicks, potentially, depending on what their relationship status is at any given moment. But typically, not really like long-term relationship guys. Because you've had a couple here and there. Danny, not so much. And I've seen you guys both in action sometimes, and it's great. I've seen you do incredible things, and I've also seen you at your drunkest. Yeah. And yeah. you've done some, both of you have done some funny shit that I can recall, yeah. if you'd like me to share. Not Please. really. <laughs> you can share mine. Neither of these stories are that bad, but they're pretty funny. McGovern, you're going to know this one. And I don't know if you even remember this, but we're on a plane. Zach's been drinking all day and we get on the flight and the flight attendant is there. And Zach goes, I really like your hair. <laughs> Do you remember this? I don't remember. This. <laughs> and she goes, oh, thank you. And you're like, no, it looks fucking amazing. And she was like, sir, please don't swear. And you went, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. That was great. That's That's so and funny. One of my favorite Palmer ones. Oh. Danny one time is Dan there's a girl. I'm sitting with a girl that we all know. I'm not gonna say who it is, whatever. And Danny's sort of like on the prowl a little bit. He's dancing. He's being a spider. He's dancing. <laughs> he's dancing and he starts moving closer and closer and she goes. I'm not going to fuck you, Danny. <laughs> and then he just danced away. <laughs> and I was like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, dude. I like it. You didn't even lose stride. You were like, eh. All right. I'm going to go back over here. Those were in that. Those were in that. Those are mild. Yeah, I don't want to embarrass you guys. I don't really, I don't have specifically embarrassing stories about yeah. you. And I obviously wouldn't share them if I did. Yeah. The one so. funny uh, airplane story I have with you and I is I had, I got upgraded to first class on the way back. I think it was Miami. Miami. And you were in the back, which is fine. I would have been too if I didn't get upgraded. And you came up. <laughs> was that a dick? <laughs> was it a dick? Did it sound like a dick? Yeah. I mean, I have a little bit of status. It's no big deal. Yeah, you're doing, anyway, um, doing great. Uh, but you came up, and I and you can help out with the story. And like he, the flight attendant yelled at you. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to come up to first class and hand Zach something, or like I want I want to say something. I was I want to make a joke. Yeah, you're joking. So I briefly entered first class, and at that moment, the pilot was going to the bathroom, and they had blocked off the first class bathroom, and the flight attendant thought I was rushing the cabin, the flight deck. <laughs> <laughs> and told Zach, what do you say to you? He's like, if you tell your friend, we're gonna turn, land this yeah. plane or something. And then as soon as Danny went back to economy, I was like, I don't know who that man. Is. <laughs> <laughs> he actually cleared it up, and they brought me a drink to apologize. Yeah, okay. yeah. pretty cool, huh? I did. I was like, no, I'm just joking. After that, but then I was like, he was just, he didn't mean anything by it. He just was coming up to say something. Yeah, yes. it was cool. I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah, the plane apologized to me. <laughs> that was cool. I didn't know you got a yeah. drink out of it. Yeah, they brought me so, a drink. I was like, thank you. I mean, neither of us needed drinks at that point. Yeah, I was going to say. That's for sure. After Dude, Ricky's wedding. One time I was on the phone in the airport. You were at the bar. We had been sitting at the bar. I don't think you're going to remember this either, but this is funny. Uh, I'm talking to Zach Mitchell, who's my manager, on the phone, and we're chatting about the plan for later. And I turn around. I'm like, oh, I'm going to tell my garden. I turn around. I just, I don't know how you got to this point, but you and the bartender were holding arms in the air like this. <laughs> I was like, what is, you were like interlocked fingers. Really? <laughs> what going, the fuck? And I was like, all right. I guess I'm a McGovern, friendly guy. I guess McGovern's making friends, That's bro. Right. And where, where were we? Old Oklahoma City, Tulsa? Oh, yeah. I, I remember that. I was just being friendly. We yeah, just were like cheersing on something. Nice. No, dude, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. That's nice. Yeah, that's very nice, dude. Zach's yeah. very, so, you're very socially adept. Uh, yeah, I'm social. I like drinking. Get those together. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, you're a friendly guy. He's yeah. going to break it down, uh, breaking down barriers. So, breaking the ice. What, like, in, 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 what is the likelihood that either of you will end up in a long-term <laughs> relationship at some point? Uh, <coughs> I would, I mean, I've had many opportunities, as had Danny, and I've been in long-term relationships, but I haven't necessarily been the best partner, um, and you can infer from that what you like. <laughs> but Danny has stayed perpetually single. Um, you've in like New dated. York? Yeah. You've like dated me. You haven't had like a like a boyfriend girlfriend. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I I mean I don't know. What do you think? I would like to be in a long term relationship. I think over the course of the next like five years, I'd like to pursue that. But you can't force something. I want I want to date this one girl. She's not interested in doing that right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I can't like force somebody to date me seriously. But I would like that to occur in the next few years. Yeah. 
Solid. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I want to. I want to be in an open relationship at some point. I think would be the best for me. And uh, complete honesty, because I get in these relationships and then I get antsy and I, I like either cheat or I break up with them. Which you know, breaking up's fine, but cheating's not okay. So I'm trying to be an, a better person and just be like, okay, this is what I want. I want to have that love and companionship, but I also know at some point. I'm going to probably want to go hook up with a stranger and therefore you need to be able to do the same. So I think an open relationship is kind of what my future holds, or maybe I'll, you know, get a couple years older and my thoughts will change. My sex drive will go down and I'll be like, you know what? I'm ready to like <laughs> settle down with one girl. Doubt that, but yeah, you know, well, I'm just, I'm trying to be honest here. Right. I'm not going to be right. like, yeah, you know, I want to find the love of my life. I'm not going to sit here and lie. You know what I mean? That's very mature, bro. I think an open relationship would be, would be perfect for you. Yeah. Will you be able to handle her being allowed to be with other men. I mean, listen, I haven't done it yet. Um, so I don't know, but I, I know that I think that's something that I want to at least try. So I have to be fair and, and allow them to do it too. You guys know Eagle? Yeah. Eagle is in an open relationship, I believe. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't quote me because this, this is something he had told me kind of a while ago. Um, but I'd like to have him on because they, they kind of established a bunch of rules. Yeah, there has to be and rules. And apparently these rules are very important. Pavich was on the show. He was talking about how his their rule structure, she allegedly violated the rules. I guess she hit him up after and was like, dude, like, I, you know, she had her own version. Oh, they were in an open thing? Version of the tale. They were in an open an open thing. She dated somebody at work, which was against the rules. Yes. I listened to that up. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. a co-worker. Co-worker. Dated? You can, like... I guess it was somebody who he, she they had no she knew before or something. I, I forget how they set up the ground rules. Nobody from work. I think that was one of the that was the specific rule. And mine would be no repeats. Mm -hmm. Can't because repeats hmm. are they open the door to feelings starting to happen. Feelings turn into relationships. You know what I mean? Like it, it needs for me. It would need to be okay. Fine. You want to go out and hook up with a dude that you think is hot. Whatever. Fuck him one time and then you know come back to daddy or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you can't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is holding Zach back from having from being like, let's you guys both seem like fairly happy guys. What is preventing holding Zach back from being his best self, his hmm. happiest self in your opinion? What advice would you give him? Interesting. If you're open for this sort of feedback, of course. Okay. Um, let's keep it brief. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where do I start now? I would say just kind of like this unbridled id. And I don't mean that as an insult. Like you just, you're very focused on like immediate short-term gratification and satisfaction, <laughs> which I am too, but it's like, it just completely drives you. And I, I don't know if you're ever going to be fully happy. If you're like, you're always, you seem to have this resistance to being content. And we talked about this recently, actually, yeah. you said you were getting better about like, Hey, I'm going to go home to my apartment just have yeah, a nice yeah. night. Like, I think if you can find contentment and solitude a little bit, I think that would lead you to a happier path. Ultimately. That's a good example uh, of what we were talking about before, because I used to be the type of guy where if I went out and I wanted to get laid on like a Friday, Saturday night or whatever night, and it didn't happen, I would go home and be like, you're a fucking loser. You're never going to be anything. You suck. You don't know how to talk to girls. You're ugly. You know what I mean? And now I can just go home and be like, eh, whatever. Struck out. No big deal. I'm going to, Go to sleep. That's good. Be a little less drunk. Wake up tomorrow. Go to the gym. Think about the positives for the next day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it really, I mean, it's it's changed a lot because I, I literally used to be like, fuck, dude. I struck out. Like, I'm a loser. Like, really come down on myself. And now it's like I just go home and I'm like, I'm going to eat SpaghettiOs. Fucking whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's one of yeah. my late night drunk foods. I love SpaghettiOs and meatballs. <laughs> really? They're good. Yeah, yeah, and sweet. cottage cheese, dude. That's good. <laughs> Very <laughs> solid. Very solid. Do you guys have late night drunk foods? Dude, I my metabolism is so shit. Like, if I were to do that, how fat I would get, how quickly is insane. So, like, I try to win the battles that I can. I try to avoid drunk eating. Yeah, because I eat too much as it is. I feel like you don't eat late at night. At I all. haven't been drinking uh, unless I haven't had no, a full no meal. Drinks. Like, not like, like I'm just I do. I'm, I want to. I'm gonna shoot my special and say, like if I just like look. She like shit, and I at least didn't try not to. I'll feel bad about myself. If okay. I tried not to, and I still look like shit, then I just I'm just a guy sense. who looks like shit, dude. Well, I think you look great. I appreciate. Yeah, it. nice. is Agreed. cottage cheese wet? <laughs> um, yeah, it's wet. Typically, it's definitely wet. There's like different kinds. Like whipped is less wet. It's healthy, right? Super healthy. Very healthy. It's straight protein and, and calcium. High in protein. I mean, it's got a little bit of sodium in it, which isn't great. But like at the end of a night of drinking, like you need that sodium anyway. So. And I love it. Just crush a whole tin of cottage cheese, go to bed, don't feel bad about yourself. Interesting. Like 50 grams of protein in one like thing of cottage cheese and like six grams of carbs. 
Because it's the carbs that I think, carbs and fat that you're going to get fat from it. The night. combo, yeah. Yeah, if it's just straight Lethal. protein, low fat, low carb, like, you're going to be fine. You're good. Yeah. I think it's nice being in the city having access to, like, the halal trucks. Like, that's a good late night. Yeah, but that, but, you'll get fat. I mean, you're young, so, like, you're still fine. And he it. also, he's one of these guys who could eat a fucking horse and not gain weight. Uh, you might, yeah, you have that body type where you might be 50 years old and be able to crush that halal and be fine the next day. I'm at a point where I, I do that sometimes, too, but then the next day I'm like, you got to get your fat ass to the gym and pay the price. And I know that when I'm doing it, I'm like, all right, I'm eating a burrito at four in the morning. Like you're going to get up at 10 and you're going to go to the gym because you have to, you mm-hmm. know, cause I will get fat. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Um, well, well, there's one thing that should not be discounted here. So Zach has clearly grown as an individual. We're happy to see it. Uh, you know, you guys, your friendship is blossoming and is stronger than ever. Um, but I, we should not discount the fact that when Zach was 16, he was forced to behead a chicken <laughs> in and Mexico and stab a pig and kill a pig. And, a pig. and he's <laughs> never been able to form meaningful connections ever since <laughs> his emotions blood out with a chicken's head. This is a true story. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell this story quickly? And then we'll move on to Danny's. What Danny um, needs it was actually when I was 14. Okay. So even younger, even worse <laughs> to Mexico with my, were you neighbor. a virgin? No, I lost my virginity at 14. Okay. So you were so new, was, newly de virginized. Yeah. I mean, I was already crushing ass and then going to Mexico. <laughs> You're in eighth grade? It's inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> it's inappropriate. Eighth grade. Crushing ass is inappropriate? Yeah. Why? I'm just, I'm just making a joke. Oh, I was like, what? Crushing ass. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> go to Also, like, my parents should not have let me go to Mexico with my neighbors. We drove 38 hours to Mexico. <laughs> Jesus. You had never been on a plane at this point, right? No, I, I wasn't on a plane until Bro, I was a senior in high school. Zach used to go to the airport to just watch the planes take off. That Literally. was that was an activity that he and Danny. It was shortly before 2001, so you're still able to go through security, or whatever the security was, and like watch planes take off. And that was like my mom's idea of like a fun day in the city, which it was fun. But like looking back, I'm like, oh, we were poor. Right. That's something that's Jersey? impressive. Huh? Where did you grow up? Outside Chicago. So we would have to drive Rockford, an hour, Illinois. An, a Rockford, Illinois, like an hour into the airport, and then just not go anywhere. Dude, so that's one thing that Danny and Zach have in common. They both come from like humble beginnings. Yeah, in the Midwest. You, in the Midwest. And you both now are sort of like si- success stories of people who changed their sort of like social placement. In, yeah. in society. And I, I don't want to sit Thanks, here and bro. sound like, you know. I brought it up. I wasn't. No, but I, I'm, I just don't want it to sound like I'm saying I was poor. I was joking. We weren't like well to do by any means but like never, blue collar middle class yeah, whatever you want to exactly call it. but it wasn't like oh let's go out to fucking the nicest steakhouse in, in town tonight it was like if we went to i don't know red lobster i was like oh it's okay someone's doing pretty well like so that. you've never been on you and, and to be honest like i also i relate to this a bit because i did used to go to italy but it was because my fucking family lived yeah there. exactly so we were going on the like tape your luggage trip yeah we're like oh oh like those the people who don't know what the fuck they're doing in the airport like yeah. that felt like the vibe a little bit so i had i'd been on planes a bunch but only to go to italy the only other plane ride i took was to go to disney world one time yeah so i didn't go so i didn't ride a plane I, until i was relate. 17 for a prom trip uh from my parents a gift for as you know graduation but the 38 hours to Mexico was in a Chevy <laughs> Astro van uh, with my neighbors, like my the dad, the mom. They were Mexican. Mexican. The two brothers and the sister. The fucking van was packed. We get down to Mexico the first day. The, so did you take breaks in the car? I mean, not really. Like, we didn't you sleep. You just sat in the we, car. We, like, slept in the van. Like, there was no hotel situation. It was just straight through. Like, the mom and dad would just switch driving. How do you entertain yourself for that long in the car? I mean, think about it. There was no, like, we didn't have phones back then. This is, like, 2000, 2001? It was, they, had a, they had a TV in the van, so we would just watch movies. But, like, most of them were in Spanish. So I'm just, like, watching these <laughs> fucking movies. Like, <laughs> At guessing. some point, were you like, why did I do this? I mean, not, not really, because <laughs> I was, you know, I was 14. You had a passport? I had a passport. Um... But I don't think you needed a passport for Mexico then. I don't think so. But I did have one, but I don't think you needed one. But as a 14-year-old, I'm like, dude, this is fucking cool. I'm going to another country with right. my friends, no parents. Like, their parents were strict for them, but not me. They first were, international you know, trip? First international trip. So we get there, first day in Mexico. They're like, oh, we're going to have a big pig roast and chicken thing tonight. And they called me Wedo, which, I mean, things like, I think it means, like, blondie or something like that. But they would be like, oh, come here, Wedo. We're going to show you what to do, man. <laughs> and then we go to this. And I was like, well, I want chicken. And they take me to this farm and there's a bunch of chickens running around. And I had never been on a farm like that before. So I was like, all right, well, where's the fucking chicken at? And they're like, you get it. You get a pick of one. 
<laughs> and I fucking picked one, and she goes and grabs it by the neck and puts it on this chopping block and just gives me the, the giant <laughs> knife and holds the body apart, and the chicken's just, like, looking <laughs> up at me. Are we friends? And then I just <laughs> I did it, and she was, like, holding my hand because I was, like, shaky. <laughs> no, you... You do it. I'm like, okay, so I shut my eyes and just chop that fucker's head off. And it's true. They, like, run around for a little bit afterwards. And then they take me to this other farm with a giant pig, and this thing's already fucking tied up, all four arms. And it's laying down. It's extended out. And they give me this sharp-ass knife, and they're like, you do it. <laughs> what a nightmare. And it was still alive? The pig oh, it was 100% was squealing. alive. It was like... <laughs> oh, and I don't know, guys. Guys, I don't know if you've ever been to a farm with pigs. Pigs squealing oh, is yeah. a horrifying noise. It's. I still remember the noise. Like, oh my it, dude, the, the legs are apart, and it's like it has eyes like a human. So it's like looking back at you, and it like he he hold, the guy's holding my hand, and he puts the knife to where the heart is, and it kind of like pokes the pig a little bit. Doesn't pierce the skin, but pokes the pig a little bit, and the pig's like. Wee! Bro, no, it's like, it's like, it's like, whee, whee. Yeah. And it's like, like <laughs> it's the most dramatic sounding oh, yeah. thing, bro. And even when, like even when they're just men. fighting to eat, they oh, do yeah. that. And it's like, guys, there's plenty of fucking Gosh, sludge yeah. for you to eat. And these and adult men are like holding his leg, like fighting against it. And he's like, <laughs> pushes on it. And I'm like, no, and I couldn't do this one. So he like put his hand on the end of the knife and just fucking. Oh my God. And pulled it out. And every time the pig would, would go. It would like squirt blood from its chest and then it would breathe in and stop stop squirting blood. And I'd be like, oh, it's done bleeding. Then, Wee! <laughs> Did you look into its eyes as it oh, yeah, its it last like, breath? <laughs> dude, it's so fucked up. And then we fucking ate that pig, dude. Oh my God. And they all knew in that silence. I killed it. So they, no, it was like a giant. They're like, oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. They were like, hey, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember where in Mexico you were? Uh, it was it was in the state of uh, Guanajuato, <laughs> and the town was nice. called Yuridia. Nice, dude. Yeah, nice. I'm not gonna sit here and be like Juana Juato. Yeah, yeah no, I had, you gotta no, do the accent. I respect it. I respect you know? it. I respect it. I just didn't see it coming. So yeah, um, you didn't need a passport until 2008. That's so uh, I didn't. I, I had nice. one, but I didn't take it. I remember that because you just mm. drive fucking straight through. And then your parents were like, "How is Mexico, Zayac?" And you're like, "I don't want to talk about it." I came back. I'm smoking a cigarette. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what a fucking tail, dude. Crazy. So that may or may not have contributed to any of Zach's problems in adulthood. Do you think it did? If he has any. Well, I think Sorry. it's, you know, now every time I'm getting emotionally close to a woman, I just hear, Wee! <laughs> <laughs> That's great, dude. Um, okay, dude. So if you had advice for Danny, about what he would need to do to, you know, live a happier, more fulfilling life. What would you say to him? Um, just in terms of women, I think you're, I think you're very picky. And I think that from what I've seen, you've, you've had a lot of women come into your life that could and would have been potentially good partners for you. But at a certain point, you always find something that you don't like. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not even like the biggest thing. Can I add, mean? can I give a specific mm -hmm. example? Yeah. You're like, dude, her alarm went off at like 7.15, dude. Yeah. And it was playing like a Puff Daddy song, dude. Like, why <laughs> would you have a Puff Daddy song as your alarm, dude? It's like, dude, I can't be, dude. Nah, <sighs> dude. dude, I told her not to come over like, I don't have to wake up <laughs> until like 8.30. Dude, her alarm's going off at 7.15. It's like, nah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Or she goes to bed at 11 and I'm like staring at the That's thing. another big one. He like hates that the girl goes to bed before him. And he's just... <laughs> And it's like, that's a deal breaker. He's like, Shh, dude, she went to bed at 11, dude. I don't want to date that, dude. I don't know what to do with myself. I can't fall asleep at 11. Dude, yeah. another good one. Uh, oh, Danny had a girl over for the weekend one time, like a while ago, and he was in the shower and she tried to join him in the shower. And he was like, dude, what are you doing? Oh, I think <laughs> she didn't try to join me. She just wanted to tell me something, but uh, she ripped the curtain back. Uh, I'm like, what? Can you give me a second here? I like, I don't know. I mean, that, to uh, me, that, that, is would, a, that's a that was annoying, annoying, right? Yeah. I would have laughed. I would have been like startled and then. All right, Jesus. Laughed and been like, well, fucking hop in. You know what I mean? I'm not answering the question until you get in here. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, it's horny. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Daddy's ready. <laughs> Daddy. okay, keep going. Keep going. Sorry. So he but finds just, things wrong with girls. But like, <clears throat> excuse me, like to me, not necessarily deal breaker level things, like little things like that. Or like you'll find little physical things that aren't even that big of a deal. And that'll be your, and 
it'll be your reason. Like you try, you might try a little bit longer, but eventually you're just like, I just couldn't, I just couldn't deal with it, dude. No. Yeah. Just, no. You're right. But I think in my mind, maybe that's subliminally or subconsciously that you're doing that on purpose. So that way you're not, you don't have to get closer and be in a relationship. Right. You know? Yeah. I want to avoid that true intimacy. So you find that excuse that really isn't even there. You're creating an excuse to avoid that. Yeah. Cause I, I really value my independence and I want to protect it. And I feel like if I'm going to be annoyed <laughs> during this period of true intimacy, then I'm not going to be happy, but yeah. that's not necessarily the case, but no a relationship. You're not going to be happy all the time in a relationship. You're going to be annoyed. A lot of times you're going to be angry. You're going to be sad. You're going to be happy, but there's it, a relationship is every emotion you're going to experience with this person. So you can't just say like, I don't want to be in this thing if I'm going to be annoyed. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's two small potatoes to call it. it. It's going to be part of a relationship. <laughs> And if you date a woman that never annoys you, she's going, she's probably going to murder you. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, that's too perfect. Right. Right. There needs to be some faults to everybody, you know? Yeah. But then what about the thing where I, I pursue a girl and then she, she doesn't feel the same way about me. I feel like that happens a lot too. You like Is that, that something? It seems to me you seek that out a bit. It's like a thing where yeah. you're like, uh, the amount of times I've heard Danny be like, Dude, uh, I've just met this girl. She's like married and has five kids and lives on Mars, but I think she likes me. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's, he likes, right. the, he likes the, the unattainable chase. Right. You know what Danny I mean? Danny likes the chase, dude. Because it, it protects my independence. I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know what it is. Maybe. But there are a lot of maybe. situations, just like you're saying, where you've told me about this girl, and I'm like, dude, that's never going to happen. And you're like, dude, she's very flirty over text, dude. <laughs> no, she's not. She thinks you're like one of her friends, man. <laughs> not nothing. Not digging at you. I'm just saying, like, if you go into a situation where you're like trying to talk to like a girl who's engaged or married or has this like long term boyfriend, it's like you're starting 10 steps back already. Right. You know what I mean? You're not starting at equal ground. You're starting way back here. And maybe there is some subconscious thing to that. Yeah. Because you're like, I'm never going to get it, but it entertains me and I feel good about it and it's fun and flirty, but it's never going to affect me. I agree. I you completely know? agree. I've seen you do. I mean, Danny does well with the ladies. All right, you do it's, for it's, sure. Thank you. Danny does well with the ladies, and sometimes even you know you'll be with uh, like you'll you'll be spending some time with somebody for a period of time, and I'll be like, oh wow, Danny, like nice yeah. nice job, and you're like, eh, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I know. Yeah, when I he's know. like doing well with a woman, I just like start the countdown clock. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> he's gonna find something he doesn't like. Yeah. But I will say, like, I completely agree with you. But I will say that because I'm in my late 40s, most of the single people, most people in their late 30s and their 40s are in a relationship or married, those people tend to be more in my peer group. Yeah. So for me to find single, a greater percentage of single women, I have to go much younger. And then I talk to a girl who's 28 and she's like, I don't want to get into something right now. Right, right, right. And so the, I kind of get caught between those worlds. The nature I get that. with which like you are meeting people a lot of the time too is like a younger leaning circle. Yeah. The, the like well, you know, 2.30 by, a.m. library bar crowd tends to have youthful people in it. And yeah. also the Not nature, an excuse, but a factor. Yeah. But also the nature of what you do. You know, we, we all do stand up like we're out late. You know what I mean? Like you don't have time on a Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to go have a drink with a 42 year old woman. You know what I mean? You have time on a Friday night at 2.30 to talk to a blacked out 28 year old. But joking about the blacked out. He's yeah. a freak out. I'm kidding. They're not blacked out. They're fully aware. We can yeah, we can cut that. Yeah. No, if you want, you can just this will be funny. You can do an edit where you just like completely don't show his face at all. <laughs> but like we know he said something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. That's yeah, we'll, we'll, let, we'll allow Danny to clear. Yeah, everything but I'm saying you're coming across you're you're coming across more of that those younger women because of <laughs> what you do. Right. Exactly. You know? that's natural. But then again, there's people like Julio that are in that are comics that are even younger than me that are in long term successful relationships. So it's like yeah. I will say that you're right. It's a factor. So the things that I hear you guys talking about with like gratification and whatever, I mm -hmm. am now in a, a place where I, I get that now from like work. Yeah. We talked about that when we were on the road and mm -hmm. like I, I get that I, thrill from work and I appreciate that so much. It's just talking about what's going on with Danny and I specifically in like relationships, quote unquote. It's like, I worry that I not worry, but I hope that happens to me at some point. You know what I mean? Even if it is an open relationship, because I get I get gratitude and joy from work stuff. You know what I mean? Like booking shows and going on the road and like getting laughs and something gets a lot of likes or whatever. I get the joy there, but I also still am very much in the mode where like right. if a girl pays attention to me or like right, I get right, to sleep right. with a girl can't that replace, I want to chase, it's it like, can't replace that. Oh, yeah. there's just part of my like man brain that's like, yeah, I need to feed. I need to feed. It's exciting. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
I'm, I'm touching Lynch on the show for the first time. Oh, my time. God. <laughs> uh, that's insane. Um, yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, it works for me, whatever. Yeah. Like, I don't, you know, I don't feel the need to justify But I aspire that. to be like you, though. That's how I yeah. should be. Not should yeah. be, but would like to grow towards. No. Grass is always greener, dude. I know, but that's yeah. the thing. But, yeah. Do you but would, you could, yeah, be still, I mean, you're saying you're in your late 40s. There's plenty. I, I think there's plenty of women in their 40s that are single and like, 100%. Looking to me, you just have to, if you want that, you have to put that effort forth rather than just like doing what we're saying, like trying to meet a chick at a, at a show or like after a show, you have to put that effort forth to be like, all right, I'm cognitively going to try to seek out a woman in her forties who wants to potentially look towards dating someone who has a, a irregular lifestyle. Cause you have a full-time day job and you have pretty much a full-time comedy career at night and on weekends. That is, that does narrow down the pool of women that are going to be okay with that. Right. And exactly. bro, look, a 30, a, someone who's like 30 is well within your range as well. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, Like yeah. you're a youthful oh, guy. Yeah. 30 is that age too, where somebody's like looking for something, but they're still young and like can keep up with you. Yeah. You know right. I mean? Right. Maybe like, I don't know. So also you and Joe Liss and Ricky have full-time comedy careers and not a day job. I have both things to contend you know, with. Totally. Not yeah. that it's an excuse, but I just you know, thought about that actually. No, hundred percent. hundred percent. Um, but Which means I get to work harder on my comedy career. <laughs> well, maybe, you know, who knows? Yeah, maybe one of right? those things will take over. Yeah, I, exactly. I agree. I wasn't trying to say that, like, you can only seek out women in their 40s. But yeah, if if either case happens, they have to be completely okay with a comedy career and a full-time career. Like with me, I've dated girls that have full-time jobs during the day, and then I'm out at night, and I don't have a full-time job during the day. doesn't work because it always is a point of contention where it's it like, works. It works for me. Just yeah. saying. And now Hill Dog's in the office most of the time and oh. we're bummed about it you know but yeah. we're like it's okay like we'll figure i don't know yeah and again yeah. I'm like i'm not saying it doesn't work it but work. I've, I've just seen it not work because and it's more me right because there's a lot of times where there's no overlap and then guess what happens zach starts to fucking start looking around and being like oh this one's hot this one's hot that one's hot and then i start to put that relationship on the back burner when i'm like i'm not getting the attention i want right now in this moment so now i'm gonna find it at a show or find it after you know what i mean mm-hmm so that's why it doesn't work for me. But that's why everybody's their own person. 100%. Yeah, it's good that it you're aware of that. Yeah. All right, so we have, a, we have a little bit of time left before we get to wrap it up. I know Danny has told me, at least he's written a couple of things down. <laughs> if you feel I like... I feel bad now. I feel like it's been pretty nice. <laughs> no, it's going great. But let's, Oh, it's about me? I, I took some he's, notes he's down. He's prepared he said, some notes. Didn't I, you, yeah. I didn't necessarily specifically say uh, to you. No, I, I asked but, and you said whatever. Yeah. So, so here's Danny. Has oh, prepared. Trust, I'll, I'll be fine. Coming this, off the top of my head. This seems to suit your dynamic anyway, yeah. Danny, having a prepared list of, <laughs> of it's problems. It's going up. The podcast is like, oh, they're okay. They seem oh, well. This then. is a good resolution. Let's make sure to end on a low note, guys. Yeah, yeah. Let's make sure to ruin the friendship before we leave. <laughs> Why don't I just do one? What, do so, do no, them, I'd okay. like to go do all of them. Okay. But I just want to say, I hope this doesn't seem like it's mean-spirited on my behalf. Everyone's like, oh, like these guys seem to be in a great place in their friendship. What <laughs> makes you want to do this? <laughs> and what, ma- what makes me want to do this is that I was listening to your guys' Space What the Fuck, dude, that is now the Danny Palmer Show from 2021 or whatever. And they were just fighting, and it was so funny that I was crying of laughter. So yeah, I wanted thanks, to man. get them to bicker with each other in a way that they can handle. So thank you. And you're showcasing us. We appreciate it. Please yeah. read the list of things. We definitely you had some, Zach. some bigger sparks today. It's yeah, good. totally dude. You guys are good. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing you're having ratings juggernaut Zach on the pod. Maybe, maybe he'll have you on his podcast to return the favor. Oh, he doesn't have one. Why don't you start a podcast? <laughs> oh, it's just nice. to do a roast. Oh, it's just a roast now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, isn't that what the, I don't know, bro. You do whatever you want. That's hilarious. How does that make you feel? I mean, I, I didn't realize it was a fucking roast here, buddy. I, I didn't mean I, that did sound roasty. I wasn't trying to write a roast yeah. joke. Well, you can. But uh, I, I do. I do want to positively pressure you to start a podcast. I want to start. I don't a know podcast. why you won't do it. I mean, I'm sure I can get to your benchmark milestone of a thousand listeners. At there you go. At some point. There, that, that's one of my points on this list. <laughs> Zach is a dismal optimist. He thinks that the effort he'll put into that won't won't be rewarding. And no, that, no, no. It's just I'm, there's not enough immediate gratification in building a podcast for him to start one. I'm responding to your first draft <laughs> roast joke, dude. Uh that I stutter, stumble through. Well, I talked about constant stimulation, media gratification. Yeah. I talked about three t-shirts, all four seasons. <laughs> that being a part of your forensic files episode. Look at this guy; he's insane. Very nice. Okay, this is one. Of, this is my very one. Now, to your defense, I listened to my one of my sets from last weekend. You gave me a very nice stand-up intro. Um, but I think that Zach has a tendency, like this other comic. I don't know if I should say her name. Is name? You can bleep it out. You can say it. If- they both do this thing where they go, like, like here. Here's how you're supposed to do an intro. Hey guys, give it up for your next comic. He's been on the New York Festival, New York Comedy Festival. He's hilarious. Zach McGovern. Ends on his name. Zach McGovern very clearly stated so the audience can follow them on Instagram. Keep track of their career. This is what Zach does half the time. 
Not all the time. Half the time. He goes. Okay, okay. You guys are having a great time. You have a great time. Yeah, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Yeah, keep it going. 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 At what point was there a name articulated that the audience could understand? You did that with that that girl whose name starts with an S at Tribeca on Saturday. I'm like, dude, at, at no point did I hear someone's name. Yeah, do you know why I did it? Because her name's fucking hard to remember and long as shit. And I didn't remember uh, when I was on stage, so I mumbled it out uh, in a lot. I forgot about it. So it sounds it like purpose. I'm saying something. I know that trick well because uh, no one can say my name either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, sometimes you do it with people that you know. <laughs> <laughs> you just point. <laughs> But yeah. sometimes you do a people's name that you do know well. But I, I just think the intro should end on their name, and their name should be clearly stated. See, this I is, will. Say, <laughs> but I, that's of true. Stupid little points. It's of disrespectful to the comic. Exactly. Can, you, can, you pull out a, can you pull out a piece of paper with their name on it, and then like you know how like there's different pronunciations yeah. with yeah, different I could spellings do that, to help but it you seems, say a word. I could do that, but in my mind, it seems disrespectful. It seems less disrespectful <laughs> to be like this person, <laughs> right? It's, you know, you want to give the illusion that you know the comedian. Rather than just being like, all right, this next comedian, super funny person, one of my favorite friends ever, was in my wedding. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I get that, bro. I get that. <laughs> uh, I will say, Zach, has, if you've done my intro as well, when you've done them, you both have done a great job. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I appreciate Thank you. Yeah. Um, Oh, the gym pic. So Zach posts, he loves to like take selfies of himself at all times. And he's like, dude, girls like when they see my head and face, dude. It's always, his Instagram is constantly like a picture from his apartment with some words on it or like a picture of himself. And one time he posted a picture, he posted a picture of himself at the gym in the mirror with his arms jacked. I'm like, who the fuck does this? Then two weeks later, he recycled that picture to promote a show at New York Comedy Club. <laughs> yeah, he that. went back into his phone. This is unbridled vanity. Goes back two weeks in his pictures, finds an old picture of himself at the gym and posts that. Like, dude, get over yourself. I know. Danny's like, how many times can I come to this picture? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to meet a girl. Stop doing that. Uh, That's a very weird thing. Like I've, you know, obviously it's, it's weird it's, to do. I'm a vain person. I admit that, but I looked great in the picture and I thought it'd be funny to repost it as like a comedy club picture. You thought it'd be funny. I thought it'd be funny. Like it makes no sense. It'd oh, that's no hilarious. Problem. Me show my arms to girls. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. What is it? What is your uh, good vibes with Danny Palmer? Yeah, that good just vibes. Gets less and less likes every fucking video. <laughs> doing right, dude. We're doing all right. Good vibes. Okay, vibes. No vibes. Is anyone here vibes? <laughs> that's gonna be my ticket out of comedy basement, pal. <laughs> Literally. Also, every one of those videos is in your apartment too. So yeah. Well, you know, I have a busy life. You have a busy life. Okay. I'm gonna do some in New Orleans this weekend. Okay. Um, oh, he, Zach has an ever-growing collection of dumb tattoos, and we've already covered that, basically. Yeah. <laughs> we have not covered Three that. Three t-shirts. We can cover it. Um, oh, okay. L last stand-up story. All Zach these are about me. Physical things about Zach. Somebody wants my John, dude. <laughs> no, I attacked your stand-up as well. <laughs> bet, the majority of them are about my looks, my tattoos, which are on my body. Like, you're gay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what you're focused on all the time. Clearly, and you're thus focused it stands on out it, too. as a topic. You're focused on it too, bro. Let's kiss. Um, oh, that would be great, dude. That would be hilarious. I would do it. If you two were the only people left on the earth, how quickly you would start fucking would be amazing. No shot. <laughs> dude, I'll fuck a plant. No way. I'm not sure that you may not have a choice, dude. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. true. Zach's <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night, you see Zach in the corner of the room like... I'm like, all right, man, just put it in. You're looking pretty cute over there, Danny. <laughs> pretty cute. Spit, no, no, <laughs> Last night, to, Zach has this dismal economist outlook on life he thinks the worst possible thing is going to happen he did this roast battle it's three rounds of jokes i came to support first round tie or uh, the girl won second round zach wins third round zach didn't write jokes for the third round because he didn't think it was going to go three rounds i wrote three jokes and i was like too short that's I, the audience I, paid to see the show you didn't finish the job well i completely owned up to it that was correct but i also forgot about the roast until like a day before and that's completely my fault i should have put more effort into it but you know whatever it is I, what it is but i, I just thought it was a good indication of your mindset that like the worst thing that's going to happen will happen actually I think i'm trying the, to encourage you actually with i this. think the opposite <laughs> i'm not so you're thinking i thought i was going to lose i thought i was going to win in two rounds right but either way you should have like wrote all the jokes plus you're a great writer it would have been nice to hear your I, third round i appreciate jokes. that and i i owned up to it i was like yeah i just i i forgot until yesterday and i had to work that day so i was like i just didn't have the time that i allotted myself or i should have allotted myself to write yeah. the jokes i get fault. that i get that i yeah. made that mistake too yeah i just thought it was 
a good indicator of his personality a little bit. Yeah. Well, I don't have any notes because I didn't spend any more time than I need <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, right. See? On Danny Palmer. <laughs> Case in point. Or did, pre prepping for the podcast, and Julia so kindly had you on. I, I asked. I, he asked him. He did ask. I did he, ask him if he it was like, do you want me to prepare anything? Do you want me to do anything? He said, no, just come on. It'll be fun. And yeah. it has been. Right? It, it has been. Great. Been. It has I was been great. like, yeah, I don't have anything really other than things we've already talked about. <laughs> yeah. That I just thought this is the second example of not preparing something. <laughs> Well, I mean, he didn't need to prepare. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, there's some there's some things that I could bring up that can't be said. So yeah, uh, good. Not gonna say them. Danny T wins this round. Tough shit, pal. I gotta keep my job. It's true. It's true. Well, <laughs> you just just like blanket insults. Or? Not blanket insults, but things that you know I could say, not necessarily against that, but also just like things about you that you, people would be like, yeah, that's definitely things Danny does. Like what? No, 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 no. You can't, can't do, do it. it. Let's not do that. Can't please. do it. It not can't. Sorry. It wouldn't be appropriate. It wouldn't be appropriate for the guidelines Danny set out on his. I mean, your podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, maybe one day, hopefully, Danny, yeah, uh, will be able to tell him something. Once my comedy career launches, no holds barred. Exactly. All right. So, so before we before we bring it home, I would like both of you guys to get. I would like you guys to exchange compliments with each other, things you like about each other, and why you value each other's friendship. We'll allow Danny to start. Mm -hmm since Danny just sort of led the barrage for a bit. So we'll allow him to get in Zach's good graces so Zach is able to come up with something that he feels nicely about to say about you. I like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was thinking about this as you were talking, actually. I think you've always been a very growth-oriented mindset person. You're open to feedback. You internalize it. You act on it. You talk about it. And you you demonstrated that today. And like your past behavior this, current behavior this, this is what you'd like to do. Like. Uh, saying that an open open relationship is the ideal scenario for you probably that's growth right there just to, like get to that point and you always have that mindset and I admire that about you and I look up to that to you for doing that thank you it's inspiring thank you very nice okay uh you've always been a leader socially to me like you've brought me into situations and you're always just like a type of person that everybody likes and there's good reason for it you you get along with everybody you're very complimentary you're very sweet to everybody um un unless that person is me um, <laughs> you're, you're, but even me but even me like yeah. i wouldn't have been friends with you for this long if i didn't value the friendship um that's part of the reason i like the friendship you know you're, you're always you always make me think more about stuff that you just gave me a compliment on like you've helped me with that too to be like okay well stop thinking like this so much what are good things like what 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 can the future hold like you have this mindset, which is always learning and always growing too, which I like, and it's worn off on me, which is why you just said that. Hmm, that's awesome. And I think that everyone thinks that about you, and you're just you just are fun to be around. Thanks, bro. Yeah, back at you. Very nice guys, Danny and Zach, friends forever, foes sometimes. Exactly. Uh, on the pod, hanging out. You can catch them with me on the road at some point in the coming year as that as that all sort of yeah, figures bro. itself out uh what else you guys want to plug anything else specifically uh, congrats on the special taping yes thank you. in february it's awesome february 16th appreciate thank it. you so much for having me on the road with you it's Anytime. been an absolute fucking blast appreciate you um i don't know if you want to do specific dates but i have some road dates i have please uh, um let's see it, every weekend in february february 9th and 10th i'm in vancouver february 15th through 17th i'm in chicago the rest of the month, I'll be in New York. Um, and going back February 1st, I'll be in Miami at the Miami Improv. February 2nd and 3rd, I will be at Sad Man Comedy Cafe in Boca Raton. So get your tickets. It's going to be a killer weekend and a killer month. Sweet. Zach's been pounding out a lot of dates. Good for him. Good for him. Um, yeah, Danny Palmer NYC on Instagram. Uh, the Danny Palmer Show, my podcast on Instagram too. Uh, Black Hat LES every Friday, 9 o'clock. You can get tickets at the uh, link, the bio link on Black Hat Comedy on Instagram. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Check out Danny's. I just want to pump Danny's show too in the lawyer side at Black Hat. It's been an awesome show for years and years. He's been absolutely fucking killing it with it. I'm also proud of you for sticking with that and growing it and making it an awesome show and a gathering place for a lot of comics to come and have an awesome time. Thanks, bro. And I didn't say my Instagram. It's at Zach McGovern. Please follow, like, subscribe. Let's keep this comedy party going. Sweet. And Lynch and I are and this Thursday going to be in Stanford, New York Comedy Club, Stanford. Uh, that should be a great show. Um, obviously, my special tape in Chicago, the 16th. Uh, I'm also in Union Hall on the 13th in Brooklyn, running my hour before I go on tape. And I also have Albany and Syracuse coming up and a couple more dates. So, notwholio.com for tickets. Anything yeah, else? Send us emails, uh, stories, uh, advice, grievances to oopsthepodcast <laughs> at gmail.com. And then I'm also at Ryan is really polite all over the place. So, thank you guys. <laughs>